Neil Oliver is tonight's outsider. And breaking tonight, Nicola Sturgeon has accused Westminster of launching a full frontal attack on Scotland after the government, in an unprecedented move, blocked her controversial new law that would allow 15-year-olds to start the process of changing gender. So this is Scotland's gender reform bill, which was set to allow youngsters to legally transition without a medical diagnosis, but it has been vetoed by Scotland's Secretary Alistair Jack tonight because it conflicted with existing British equality law. The legislation would also allow paedophiles and rapists to change gender after committing crimes. The slapdown comes as scheming Sturgeon earlier warned against attempts to block her government's policy. Um, yes, I think it would be um, an outrage. Um, in my view, uh, there are no grounds to challenge this legislation. It is within the competence of the Scottish Parliament. It doesn't affect the operation of the Equality Act. It was passed by an overwhelming majority of the Scottish Parliament after very lengthy and very intense scrutiny. Now, if you think there's balanced coverage in the media in Scotland over this issue, think again. Look at how STV's chief propagandist and political editor, so that's his official title, Colin McKay, challenged Sunak over Scottish independence at the weekend. Would you accept the outcome of a de facto referendum? Do you know what? I was, I was out all of yesterday evening, I've been out all of today, and what people are talking to me about is what we can do to actually make their lives better in the so here and now. So you're just not going to talk about no. what they're talking about? You're just going to ignore my well, question I, I, about... I, I, uh, you're just going to ignore my question about Scotland's constitutional future. Is that what you're doing? No, I think well, when, it comes to clearly a, are. When, when it comes to a general election, people will make up their own minds on what they want to vote on, right? So it's not, it's not really for me to talk about that. What I well, can no, talk is, about... That's what I'm asking you about. That, it sounds like, like you're, you're ignoring well, the mandate of the Scottish Parliament, you're ignoring a mandate potentially a Westminster election. Are you ignoring democracy? Neil Oliver, wow. Uh, it's fair to say that Sturgeon isn't exactly getting any tough coverage over this from the Scottish media. Well, well no. Uh, I mean, it's important. I was watching that clip back again of, of Nicola Sturgeon. What she really means is that it's an outrage that anybody would think to challenge her. <laughs> uh, and you know she thinks it's you know she in her opinion anyone that 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 gets in her face and says no uh, is just outrageous and that it's untenable for her it's unimaginable for her that she would be challenged in her position as, as first minister anything she says is supposed to go this constant harping on that she goes on about representing the will of the Scottish people if if you live in Scotland if you talk to Scottish people as I do every day. The vast majority, I've seen figures of 80% of Scottish people are appalled by the gender reform bill. Mm. They absolutely do not want it. They are appalled by it. You know, we've all watched the, the coverage uh, of it going, of its passage through the parliament. Mm. There were last minute amendments tabled that would have at least prevented convicted sex offenders from, you know, using this to identify as women so that they can get into and serve their time in women's jails. Nicola Sturgeon stamped even on that as a last-minute amendment. This is just yet another example of Nicola Sturgeon believing that she has the absolute unquestionable right to ram down the throats of Scottish people whatever it is that she wants to do. But now, Neil, she will use this veto by Westminster and Sunak's government, which I celebrate, by the way. I think it shows that maybe Sunak is finally growing a bit of a backbone, but she's going to use this now, isn't she, uh, to try and say that it's proof that Scottish independence is necessary? Oh, I, I, I dare say, uh, you, you know, she will repurpose anything and everything uh, and, and make it into a, a, a weapon that she can use to insist that, you know, the will of the Scottish people has been thwarted. You know, the will of the Scottish people was demonstrated all the way back in 2014 when, you know, when the vote was 55-45 in favour of Scotland remaining in the Union. And, you know, she plainly ignored the will of the Scottish people then. She doesn't, she's not interested in the will of the Scottish people. She has to continually throw red meat to her, her supporters. Uh, who are in the minority in Scotland. There's never been a majority in Scotland in favour of the policies that Nicola Sturgeon has. That's been demonstrated again and again and again. And yes, of, of course, she'll weaponise it to, to once again, you know, claim that, that, uh, that, that Scotland is the victim here. And, and Scots, the majority of Scots don't feel like victims in this situation, nor in any other. But, you know, the point is... This is what this indicates, Dan, is bigger than Nicola Sturgeon, bigger than the Scottish Parliament. This is yet another example of politicians 
who are drunk on the power that they obtained during the last couple of years, determined that they can change our lives in every way, in any way, change our lives fundamentally forever. You know, here's Nicola Sturgeon and her, her determination to introduce this gender reform bill. But look at the wider picture, the Westminster government. Look at us being herded towards you know, net zero, 15-minute cities, uh, you know, giving up on uh, fossil fuel cars, having to buy yeah. electric vehicles as though that's going to work. This is just a yet another example of, oh, of politicians course. who are out of control and, the and ignoring the public opinion. Absolutely. The but, but Neil, that's the macro level, right? If we just look at this on the micro level, uh, Sturgeon is the one who is politicising the plight of trans people. Uh, it was fascinating to see Debbie Hayton, a, a prominent trans woman, interviewed by Lawrence Fox just, just before my show started. And she said, before Sturgeon started this type of thing, we were just able to get along with our lives. And actually, it's the hard left who want to politicise trans people. And I just think it is a disgrace. Yeah, we, you and I, Dan, have, have, have shared back and forth the idea that, you know, it's never about what they say it's about. Yeah. You know, uh, Debbie Hayton made remarks that you know that um, that that she was uh, you know you know they were going about their lives quietly. Trans people were going about their lives quite quietly. Now they've been kind of hijacked by activists. The activists don't really care about trans people. Yeah. It's just another opportunity to weaponize another group of people to further a broad spectrum agenda, which is to change everybody's life in this country. Yep. You know, and the and as, as strip Debbie away said, our the, the activists will move. The activists will move on, leaving the I'm sure the vast majority of the trans uh, uh, community in, in Britain, you know, floundering in the in the in the boiling pot that's been created by all of the strife that need never have happened. And yes, Nicola Sturgeon, as she always does, has just latched on to another opportunity, you know, to batter Westminster, to go after Conservatives, to go after. The, the British Union. That is all that she's ever been about. Neil Oliver, you're absolutely fascinating as ever, putting the spider web in some context of exactly why Sturgeon is pushing through such a deranged bill against the wishes, by the way, of her population. Neil Oliver, absolutely fascinating. Of course, Neil back 6pm Saturday night. Now, breaking tonight, the government has announced its plans to block Scotland's controversial gender reform bill in a constitutional first. Under the proposed new rules, the age at which a person can apply to change their legal gender would be reduced from 16 to 18. I'm uh, sorry, from 18 to 16. Plus, adults will be able to apply if they've lived in their acquired gender for three months rather than the existing time period of two years. Now, Scottish Secretary Alistair Jack said in a statement that while he had not taken this decision lightly, there were concerns the bill would have an adverse impact on the operation of Great Britain-wide equalities legislation. Scheming Sturgeon, however, put out a provocative tweet saying, this is a full frontal attack on our democratically elected Scottish Parliament and its ability to make its own decisions on devolved matters. The Scottish Government will defend the legislation and stand up for Scotland's Parliament. If this Westminster veto succeeds, it will be the first of many. So has this decision sparked a constitutional crisis or is Westminster right to intervene, Carol Malone? Absolutely right. I mean, she's talking tosh there because two-thirds of the Scottish people don't want this bill in the first place. Poll after poll has said that. Um, you know, she's... J.K. Rowling called this bill the biggest assault on women's and girls' rights in yeah. her lifetime. She calls she calls Sturgeon the, the women's rights destroyer. And it's true. You know, she's enthralled to the trans activists. She's not listening to the Scottish people on this one because they really don't mm -hmm. want this. And th 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 you know, this means that young people at the age of 16... I mean, as a, as a matter of history, that our High Court in this country ruled that 18-year-olds weren't able to make an... Uh, couldn't, was it what they call informed consent mm. on whether or not they should be taking puberty blockers. So, so she has now given 16-year-olds the right to do that without any medical diagnosis, without any psychiatric diagnosis. They just have to live in their acquired gender for three months. And then they can be what they want. They can yeah. go where they want. And this is an and assault they, on women's I mean, rights. Benjamin Busworth, scheming sturgeon, has made trans people a political football, and that mm. is a disgrace.
No, that's exactly what Prime Minister Rishi Sunak is doing. Because this How? is an extremely dodgy thing for Westminster to do. Because if you bill. actually look at what happened, two-thirds of members of the Scottish Parliament voted for this from five different parties, including Conservative MSPs. They had both Holyrood and Westminster elections after the SNP first proposed this law, and they won clearly at both of those. They went through tens of thousands of responses in the consultations to this law. And what strikes me as most telling about the behaviour of the Westminster government here is that at no point during those many years long phase for this law did they say, oh, this isn't a devolved matter. Only once they can make a political football out of it have they tried to block the law.